session is going to be in English. I apologize if, uh, unfortunately, Cantonese is not very good, despite a few years of living here. But I'll do the best I can. Um, just I'll go back to the actual opening slide. So this is kind of the, uh, the sort of state of where we're at, I think, in, 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 uh, in media. There's been a lot happening. I'm going to give you the perspective of uh, CNN, CNN Go, and Cartoon Network, Turner Properties. Um, take you a bit of on a bit of a journey, you know, starts by looking back <clears throat> where we came from and how we've sort of evolved into a social geosocial universe, how traditional media is responding to the influence of uh, the open graph that uh, Mark Zuckerberg has coined, and the influence of crowds. But before we get into that, let's take a little journey backward, shall we? So the days of 56K, I don't know if we remember those, hypertax links, all that fabulous times. I love that, those days. That's what was happening when I first arrived here. Um, at the height of the dot-com bubble, Time Warner was trading around 275 US. Um, about March 20th, uh, reality hit when the NASDAQ uh, lost basically 10% of its value. You'd be surprised, back in those days, as you can see on the chart here, just how, uh, how things were really rocking at that time. Um, 375, uh, 371 publicly traded internet companies had grown to the point that they were, had a collective worth of uh, $1.3 trillion, if you can believe it, or roughly 8% of the value of the entire U.S. stock market at that time. Remember those glory days? Oh. Um, but we learned the hard way, and that was short-lived and essentially uh, reduced the speed of innovation for a lot of media companies in the industry as, uh, at large. Uh, although I think a lot of that is picked up. And, uh, you know, that skepticism, skepticism around digital and its relevancy, particularly for media companies, uh, it was quickly subdued by the surge of a new wave of Web 2.0 companies uh, like that of Google. And you can see here um, just how, how Google has actually dominated and moved out quite quickly. Their shares have appreciated basically 438% since they debuted back in 2004. Meanwhile, traditional companies, I hate to say it, have sort of stagnated to a degree, modest in, uh, um, growth, but very uh, not to the extent of what a lot of these new media companies have uh, experienced. And I love going back to this uh, day and age. Around 1998, uh, most larger media companies had carved out an initial footprint, um, but sites at the time were pretty rudimentary, hypertext-driven, and uh, more push than pull. Not a lot of, uh, of engagement, really. Uh, some, like the Wall Street Journal and later the South China Morning Post, which I work for as well, tested the waters of online subscriptions. In 98, the, uh, the Wall Street Journal was actually running subscriptions, believe it or not, at about $49 a year, uh, $29 for print subscribers. Um, if you ch I checked online last night. There are about a, a year subscription online is $104, and that doesn't include mobile, if you can believe it. The South China Morning Post actually launched, in, uh, launched online in uh, December 2000, or 1996, ahead of the handover, um, and then adopted a registration model in two, uh, 2004, or should I say, say 2000. Um, what we're moving to now is this geosocial universe, and this is what, where a lot of the disruption is occurring for traditional media brands. Um, this was more or less, this whole idea of the uh, social graph was coined around 2008 or so, 2009, by Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, Jesse Thomas, the interactive design agent, Jess3, produced this infographic graphic of, in May of this year. And you can see sort of just the growth. I mean, Facebook is now at 800 million users, um, 500 or 50% of which log on at least once a day. Earlier this year, Disney, Turner, and Comcast executives, they basically agreed that we're only about two years away from 75% of all TV content being available online and on mobile devices. This notion of TV everywhere is around the corner, and broadcasters will almost be completely agnostic about where and when their video content is being viewed. Much of this is brought on by the proliferation of tablets, PVPs, smart boxes, high-definition televisions, the threat of what Apple is planning, 
which no one really knows totally about, but uh, was leaked in the book that was just released on uh, uh, Steve Jobs. People don't think of TV anymore, they just think of videos, said Comcast CEO Matt Strauss earlier this year. You can see what, uh, what Twitter is doing to the universe as well for media. Growing importance of social networks and daily communication is something brands and publishers cannot ignore. In a survey conducted earlier this year by consultancy Lab42, 37% of respondents said they use Twitter multiple times a day. And the power of this media and ripple effect and influence cannot be denied. And in many cases, it is becoming our go-to platform for news. CNN, in terms of uh, you know, the geosocial universe and how brands and media uh, fit into this, CNN derives roughly about 8 to 10% of its traffic from social media, primarily Facebook. And CNN Go, our more social-oriented content uh, driver, is pulling around 10 to 15% of traffic on a monthly basis from social networks, with Facebook typically accounting for 80 to 85% of that traffic. With more brands migrating to this space, this creates some interesting uh, challenges for anyone in the advertising and publishing space. The question is, once you're there, what do you do? And uh, how, how, you know, how far are you willing to commit to it, uh, particularly in terms of resourcing it as well? Two months ago, Facebook introduced a new set of social news applications, ones that automatically share links of everything you need and read. The Wall Street Journal, Guardian, and Wall, uh, Washington Post are just a few major news organizations that have capitalized on this. The Post has 3.5 million monthly active users of its social reader. The Guardian, 4 million, creating almost a million additional page views a day. And Yahoo News has 10 million open graph users, and website referrals increased 600% since they launched their app. And on Wednesday of this week, Facebook announced its most shared stories for 2011. CNN articles accounted for 11 of those top 40, three of which made, their, made it into the uh, top fifth five articles shared. So it comes down to this question, that how to relate to people in this new era of social, and where is media going with this? Now, iReport was something that was launched by CNN back in uh, 2006, August. Um, it was inspired by another program called CNN's Fan Zone, which allowed viewers to contribute pictures and video from the 2006 FIFA World Cup. It was actually necessitated by the 2004 tsunami and the 7-7 bombings in London, with submissions coming from citizens at the, on the scene at the time, which were then edited and put on air. It's since led the development of a dedicated community of Rye reporters around the world, numbering close to 900,000. And CNN producers provide regular assignments to the community, and it's recently be re been revamped to provide greater ease for submission of reports. The premise of our report is pretty, uh, it's fairly straightforward. Tell a story, offer an opinion, say what's important to you, and join the conversation on the day's major issues. And over 14,000 stories are posted per month, while 1,100 are vetted for CNN. And 10 hours of iReport video are aired on CNN each month. And interestingly enough, three iReporters have since joined CNN. On the entertainment side of uh, Turner, Cartoon Network has made a leap to open sourcing the brand with an in initiative called Toon Creator Awards. This was launched in 2009 and ran for two years. It was sponsored by, by HP as well. This was a 360 degree initiative combining online, on the ground and on air activities, aiming at giving kids creative control over our characters. So they could create their own animations for the chance to win HP Touch Smart from PCs and see their creations aired online, or aired actually on our channel and online. It was hugely successful, running for two years, as I said, and very much focused on UGC, but also developed a social community of like-minded creators and, and sharers. Now, this leads again to the next question. Can a traditional media brand ever really be a social media brand? And we believe it can. At CNN Go, we position ourselves as a social brand. Our audience is youthful, engaged, affluent professionals who have the spending power and are very discriminating, conversational, often outspoken and value information that is honest, open, truthful, trustworthy, quirky, and again, most importantly, conversational. Our social arc begins with content and providing the ease of access through well-defined SEO tactics. 
We have content partnerships such as those with Yahoo, TripAdvisors, and others, and ensure we have a footprint among larger portals. And while our presence on key social networks, and that we all we have a presence on uh, social networks, as you can see here, everyone uh, from basically Facebook, LinkedIn to RenRen, providing content seeding and blogger reach outreach programs again to enhance our reach. Our new mobile applications for iPhone, Android, and Symbian ensure continuous access to our content. And travel industry partnerships enable us to adopt new revenue models and acquire awareness among new audience segments. So the approach that we take uh, for social media, particularly for Facebook, is we carefully plan the type of content we share based on the platforms that you will find us. Uh, for Facebook, we've adopted what I like to call a water cooler content strategy. In the day of a water cooler, everybody would hang around the water cooler and sh you know, swap stories and gossip and you know, what happened, what would you do on the weekend, where are you going, where are you traveling to? Um, so that's kind of what we do, is we post stories at specific times throughout the day that we feel resonate best with the content consumption patterns of our readers. Um, we do four to five daily wall posts, usually around four now, every four hours. The lifespan of, an, of a post on Facebook is roughly three hours. You'll see this nice sort of spike within the first hour, and then it tapers off over time. But you still get that long tail of content as well. Weekends, we are active. I think brands should be active on weekends because you'd be surprised how many are not. There's a clear space there, and people are quite con conversational and active on Facebook during the weekend. Uh, we do co-branded reader competitions. We do gamified posts. Game up your content. Make it interesting. Less passive posts, more active posts. Um, in interactive posts, video segments, editorial live wall, wall chats, getting our editorial staff onto the Facebook wall and letting them interact with, uh, with uh, our users was a, was a real experiment, but they've seen the value of doing that and it breaks down that wall. I highly encourage a lot of media organizations to try that. Um, and constant experimentation. For LinkedIn, we stick to uh, industry-related information or travel suggestions or recommendations relating to short visits to different locations, hotel options, and other content that would suit young professionals and business travelers. Now that was a program that we initiated again in June um, in support of our launch of the Sydney uh, section. We created a fictional character called, uh, named Alex, and that's actually Grace uh, Wong, who's a uh, local actress. We sent her to uh, Australia to be challenged by a series of off-the-beaten track activities, including cr kissing a crocodile, jumping off a cliff, and other unique experiences. Yeah, we really tortured her. Um, the returns from this initiative were quite significant for her brand. It really altered our perception and understanding of what could be achieved through social networks and you know, really taking a chance with types of content of this nature um, or efforts of this nature. We started the year with about 2,700 likes, launched the campaign in June, and within the first few days we saw an immediate increase in our likes and Facebook interaction. Um, with this, and you can see, or see how it's just spiked since then. We've reached 130, well actually about 132,000 I think this morning. Uh, with these new learnings from this campaign, including how to set up and run our own Facebook ad campaigns, um, we've grown our community, like I said, up to about 130,000 followers and created new conversations and markets that we weren't typically tapping. And uh, I think, again, something that a lot of brands are looking at is how to associate themselves a bit closer with content and trusted content providers. A great thing for brands right now, for media brands right now, is, to, is that trust factor. The longer you've been in the market, the more trust and value I think a lot of uh, audiences have for your brand. Um, last year we launched an, an, our initial integrated content associated with Co uh, Korean Air, and that's in, since been expanded in uh, 2011. It's a 12-month exclusive deal. Korean Air has been positioned as a sponsor of CNN Go TV, a monthly 30-minute show providing a unique take on global destinations with views from genuine insiders. We've traveled from Australia to Buenos Aires and San Francisco to Istanbul. Take us to every corner of the modern city. Natural beauty, 
And on the inter again, back to the entertainment side of our business, Prudential leveraged the content creation skills and regional reach of Cartoon Network to produce a one-of-a-kind initiative called Cha-Ching Money Smart Kids, focusing on financial literacy for children aged 7 to 12. Uh, the initiative actually was a product of a regional survey from Prudential across seven markets, including Hong Kong, to understand Asian parents' perspectives on children's money management skills. Almost all those who surveyed, 95% regionally, said it was important for children to learn money management skills, hence this program. And Cha-Ching takes an entertainment approach to building kids' un kids understanding of four areas, earn, save, spend, and donate. And the program was developed with the assistance of Blue Clues producer and children's education specialist, Dr. Alice w Wilder. So looking beyond 2011, it's going to be a case of content everywhere, and this applies a lot, uh, very much to ourselves as well. 70 million U.S. homes have access to Turner content across PC, connected TV, tablets, smartphone. And we're working with major carriers and distribution partners to extend this reach. Verizon, Verizon Comcast, and AT&T. Connected device applications, basically being able to access our char characters and content across multiple devices. Um, creating Ben 10 applications, Adult Swim applications, and of course our CNN products, news and travel and lifestyle for CNN go across multiple applications as well. So just to wrap up, you know, based on the example shown, it's pretty apparent that traditional media is transforming. It is not being left behind, as some critics have proclaimed. Uh, it's perhaps the pace of change is not as fast as perceived, but the forces of social media and adoption of new distribution platforms, platforms are driving traditional media to adapt. And ideally, it's the consumer that is at the center of the attention here. Through platforms like CNN Go or CNN I Report, it's possible to engage them to produce quality conversational content. And for media owners trying to understand social, it really comes down to serving relevant, engaging content across every possible platform. It's hard work. Uh, but the public really kind of demands it. So just to wrap it up, we sent our interns out onto the street to interview uh, passers-by on where they get their content. They work really hard on this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Don Anderson.